All right, guys. Thank you guys for joining me. Man, I know it has been a few days since I've been able to do a new video to you. Obviously, you can see I'm in a new location. I'm in my new apartment. We've got all the stuff moved out of the other place. I still got a lot of stuff I got to unpack here and stuff, guys. But we're here. This is where I'm going to be making my videos at from now on. And I really hope that I can get into it, stay into it, and really present you guys with a whole bunch of great new Bible study videos and stuff, guys. So, anyways... Let's get into it, man. I got my little desk here, so we'll see if this works out a little bit better, guys. But let's do some prayer before we jump into Psalm 12 today. Lord Jesus, I just want to come before you today, Lord. I want to shout your praises. I want to shout your glory. I want to lift up your name in my own heart and declare it to this world, Lord. Help me to do that in a way that is productive, in a way that, that, that feeds the flock and brings in the new, Lord. Help us to be those dutiful fishers of men that, that, we could, that we could share this joy and this gift of salvation with those who are in such need of it, Lord. I ask that this video be able to do what your word does, Lord, and to go out and to touch someone and to feed the hungry and to call in the lost into your arms, into your fold, into the flock, into the family of God as God's elect. And I pray all of this in your holy and mighty name. Guys, God is so amazing. Somebody out there shout amen. Does your room echo like mine? Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Well, don't echo that good, but it's okay. So anyways, guys, let's jump into it, man. Psalm 12, it's a short one, but I think I found some cool stuff to share with you guys out of it. So let's check that out. Let me close this one up and put it over here. All right, guys, so... <clears throat> Psalm 12, man's treachery and God's constancy. Subheading to the chief musician on an eight-stringed harp, a psalm of David. All right, guys, verse one. Help, Lord, for the godly man ceases, for the faithful disappear from among the sons of men. They speak idly, everyone with his neighbor, with flattering lips and a double heart they speak. May the Lord cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaks proud things who have said, with our tongue we will prevail. Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? For the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy. Now I will arise, says the Lord. I will set him in the safety for which he yearns. The words of the Lord are pure words, like silver tried in a furnace of earth purified seven times. You shall keep them, O Lord. You shall preserve them from this generation forever. The wicked prowl on every side when vileness is exalted among the sons of men. Y'all, I'm reading that last one one more time because... Man, does that feel like that hits home for the world we live in today. The wicked prowl on every side when vileness is exalted among the sons of men. All right, amen. When vileness, when rudeness is exalted, when, it, when, it's, when it's a good thing to be condescending and rude to others. Not a good thing. All right, guys, so thank you for letting me share with y'all. Let's jump back over here and see what we got, guys. So, thank you for joining me for the 12th Psalm. Again, Davidic in origin. This time, written for presentation on the familiar eight-stringed harp, or as some of us have called it, the lyre. Today's work was penned as a pleading cry to the Almighty for help in view of the, of the sad, abysmal, darkened state of this fallen world. David again makes use of a concentric framework. And by that I mean, in verse 1 we find that the earth is in trouble. Verses 2 through 4 present us with the words of the wicked. Verse 5 is central and here the Lord speaks. Verse 6 finds the circular presentation turning back with the words of the Lord and closes on verses 7 and 8 with the earth in trouble, as we had talked about in verse 1. All right, guys, so, 12-1. 
Help, Lord, for the godly man ceases, for the faithful disappear from among the sons of men. Sometimes our true devotion to God and our daily walk of faith, it can leave us feeling alienated. It can leave us feeling like David's feeling. It can leave us feeling like Elijah felt. Let's go to 1 Kings 19.14. I want to share something with you. Because we all feel this way sometimes. I know I've felt this way. I'm sure you guys have all felt this way. David felt this way. You know, it's something that was obviously worth talking about. So let's get to it here. If I can find it. 1914. You know what? Let me go back and read 13 and 14, actually, to give a little bit of presentation here. Okay, so this is 1 Kings 19, 13 and 14. So it was when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. Suddenly a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts because the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. All right, guys, so like I said, you know, we can all feel that way, whether it's David, Elijah, or us. It's okay, we can get through it with prayer and devotion, because at times we all feel a little bit alone in our devotion to God. 12.2 They speak idly, everyone with his neighbor, with flattering lips and a double heart they speak. They speak idly, or more literally translated even as they speak lies or they speak emptiness. Clearly, outright falsehoods are in sight here, but so too are, are false speech, irresponsible speech. Actions like that only serve to, to cheapen, to pervert, and to bring decay to all human communications and interactions. All right, guys, 12.3. May the Lord cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaks proud things. So cut off could mean simply that, stop their talking, you know, hit the music that they play at the Oscars when someone's been talking too much. Maybe that's what they mean, play them off, but I don't think so. I think that language like this would lean more towards a call for their exclusion from the community. These, these people who speak lies and speak emptiness. Because we are meant to lift each other up. 12.4 Who have said, with our tongue we will prevail? Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? Our words are... A tremendous use in edifying one another and lifting one another up and loving one another. Sadly, though, too often we use those same tongues and we weaponize them and we use them to spread anger, to spread hate, to spread lies. And in short, we all we serve to do is to speak death on to one another and all too often we even speak death onto our own lives with negativity and with fear and, and, and anger and hatred and just all of it, guys. There's a saying, sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me or whatever. That's just not true. And for one thing, getting hit with a stick or a stone, that might heal. Sometimes the, the death that we speak into each other and onto each other is only able to be undone by God. 12.6, guys. You know what? 5 and 6. Let me read 5 and 6 to you. For the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy. Now I will arise, says the Lord. I will set him in the safety for which he yearns. The words of the Lord are pure words, like silver, tried in a furnace of earth, <clears throat> purified seven times. We know that number seven, the number of biblical completion. Um, all right, guys, so verse five's promise can be trusted in that it is a pure truth. Our author highlights the juxtaposition between man's shady, vain, temporal words and God Almighty's true, tried, tested, 
pure words. Our Maker's words are akin to silver, refined seven times, achieving the pinnacle of purity, the dross consumed by holy fire, leaving only the bright, shining, unrivaled truth that is God and God's word. That same level of refinement and purity are inherent in God's word, a word that is free from any and all wrong or decay or, 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 or in any way lacking. God's word goes out and it will not return void and it is sharper than any two-edged sword. It can cleave a man down the middle and it can separate the bone from the, from the sinew just like it can separate the sin from the heart and it can show us who we are. All right, guys, 12 verses 7 and 8. Last one I'm going to share with you today. My God, I'm glad to be back sharing with you guys. I needed this in my heart, in my soul, in my life. You shall keep them, O Lord. You shall preserve them from this generation forever. The wicked prowl on every side when vileness is exalted among the sons of men. In these closing verses, the earth and its troubles are focused on. In short, regardless of the world, and all its chaos and the iniquity. David is just as we should all be firm in his confidence. In the supreme care that is afforded us by our loving, merciful, gracious creator God. Alright guys, amen, amen, amen. If you're not subscribed, man, smash the subscribe button, guys. I drop a new video like this. Six days a week, and I promise I ain't cutting back again, guys. Um, man, give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Share it if you loved it. If you do, man, my heart goes out to you guys. Um, if you have any prayer requests, any comments, drop those down here into the comment section. Anything, even if you want to make fun of my hair or my hat, I don't even care. Just let's communicate and have a little bit of um fellowship back and forth as Christians, guys. Um. Man, I love you guys so much. Father God loves you so much more. Whatever you're going to do, look. Whatever you're going to do, go out there and have a blessed day, y'all. I love you.